This podcast is for informational and educational purposes only. It is not medical care or advice. Clinicians should rely on their own medical judgments when advising their patients. Patients in need of medical care should consult their personal care provider. On the forefront of care as we all adjust to this new normal. Hi, I'm Tonya Caruso. Welcome to the UPMC Health Beat podcast. And joining us right now is Dr. Richard Beggy. He is the president of UPMC McGee Women's Hospital. Dr. Beggy, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. So as we all began to prepare for COVID, you made lots of changes at McGee to try to keep patients safe. Well, you're absolutely right. There have been a lot of changes. And um, early on, a lot of the changes were done really out of an abundance of caution. Um, And a lot of those changes have continued. Um, We're also screening everybody that comes into the building with clinical screening questions and taking their temperature. That includes all the healthcare workers and and people that come into the building that work here every day. Um, All the employees are masked and we're asking for patients to be masked as well um, when it makes sense. Um, And uh, we've also changed the way we're doing food delivery. We're doing uh, really little catering right now in the hospital. We're doing mostly packaged meals. Uh, things of those sorts. So we really have done a lot of things here to transition to uh, this situation, um, really for the safety of our patients and of our healthcare workers. And so during this time of preparation, you delayed some appointments for patients. Why do you think it's important now that patients start to come back in? Well, that's that's exactly right. So at the outset, we just didn't know what we were going to be facing exactly. So out of an abundance of caution, we did delay a lot of appointments and some procedures as well. Um, but it's really important that people start to start to come back. And, and the starting point of that is speaking with your physician. Um, because a lot of the things we delayed, um, while they weren't Im- potentially immediately necessary, they certainly are es- essential parts of your care. And we need you to um, be thinking about how to come back and work with your physician along those lines. Um, things like cancer screenings, whether it be a mammogram, which is you know, designed to pick up um, problems in, in women's breasts before they become uh, a, a cancer, or at least early in, in that. Things like pap tests, which also are designed as screening tests that pick up things early in the process so that we have an opportunity to prevent uh, cancer uh, from developing. So those tests are done uh, on people that, in general, mostly lack symptoms. So by definition, um, you know, it's important to come back and start to get those tests because we don't want to have the downstream effects of that. A lot of people have health conditions that, um, while they're still on their medications, haven't been monitored necessarily as closely as they're used to. Um, And so we also worry about that. So for all those reasons, it's important to come back. Uh, On the procedural front, we delayed some some procedures that people had scheduled, um, again, out of an abundance of caution. But now based on local prevalence data, which we know uh, the virus has very low prevalence in our community. We're very fortunate in that way. Um, and we're also monitoring that literally daily at UPMC. And we've seen um, little to no uh, COVID positive uh, patients when we're, we've been offering it to pre-procedural patients. Um, so it's important for people to come back and be getting those procedures that they had scheduled um, because there's major impacts on their quality of life. Um, and their disease course that we need to get back to, to some semblance of normal here. And from screenings to areas like prenatal care, you made changes there as well. So it's very interesting. Even before COVID, we had started to have some you know, real uh, forays into the use of telemedicine in prenatal care. Uh, and we've been doing telemedicine across Pennsylvania for almost a decade in some of our high-risk patients that allows them to stay in their community, get the high-risk care via telemedicine, and then Uh, in some cases come here to deliver, but in many cases stay in their local community to deliver. So we were already doing some of that, and this just accelerated that. So uh, within a week or two of figuring out that this was going to be an impact to our region, we rapidly scaled up um, our ability to telemedicine for all of our prenatal care patients, and we rapidly deployed blood pressure cuffs so they could keep an eye on their blood pressure and and let us know those values, because blood pressure is one of the many things that uh, we pay close attention to when people do come in for their prenatal care visits. Um, And it's been extremely successful and we have not had any problems that we know of. And in fact, uh, it's been very well received by our patients. So at this point, 
um, realizing the impact and the importance of telemedicine and the role it's going to have going forward, we really feel like the telemedicine is here to stay in some way, shape, or form. So we're spending a lot of time right now trying to figure out what that exactly looks like going forward. So, you know, for instance, how what percentage of your prenatal care visits could be done via telemedicine or should be done via telemedicine? Some of that depends on um, whether you have high-risk conditions or not, um, because some conditions do need to be monitored more in person. And but we're spending a lot of time figuring this out, as are many places across the country. Um, and that's not only in prenatal care, it also extends to other fields like general internal medicine um, and other fields where um, you know, we're trying to figure out what exact role telemedicine has going forward. I think we all agree that it has a role. But there are some patients that really do need to come in. There are. And, you know, um, again, some of that depends on what conditions are being treated. Um, some of that depends on the willingness and ability of the patients to do the telemedicine as well. Um, and I, I am a firm believer that some care is best delivered face to face. And there's, there is a, um, you know, the physician patient bond and the, and the power of one to one interaction. Um, not only in helping to understand what's going on with somebody, but especially in patients that are ill, there's a lot of value in face-to-face in -face interactions um, and, and things, things of that nature. So I don't think anybody believes that it's all going to be telemedicine. I think we're all striving for a kind of a new, a new balance and a new happy medium that makes sense for uh, certain patients and certain specialties. And this is going to play out over the next months and years to try and really fine tune the, the balance that we're looking for. So you touched on this earlier when talking about the visitor's policy. Walk us through what a new mom can expect when she comes in to deliver her baby. So um, when they come here, we will screen them when they come in. Um, and you know, for patients that are in labor, they're staying regardless. We're, we want everyone. We're, we're, able and willing and ready to take care of everybody as they come in. Um, but we'll be screening the person that comes with them as well and asking them to wear a mask. And while they're here, they'll have that one support person with them in the room. Um, and then, as I, as I mentioned before, we're also strongly encouraging the use of their own devices to connect with other loved ones while they're here. Or if they don't have that opportunity, we have some uh, iPads that we're distributing out to patients so that they can connect with their loved ones while they're here. And that continues into the postpartum stay. In addition to that, um, for roughly 80% of our patients, they have desired um, going home faster than what we had traditionally been doing before COVID came. So for all those women that deliver vaginally, we're actually able to get women out about 24 hours faster for the ones that want to go home, and it's safe for them to go home medically. And the same for C-section. We have been able to uh, cut down the length of stay for about 24 hours. Again, this is in patients that want to go home early. It turns out right now that a lot of patients do want to go home early, both those that have had surgery or had a routine vaginal delivery. Um, so that's, that's also a change. So in order to do that, our nurses and our docs have mobilized around that idea in order to be able to meet those patients' desires and needs to get home early. And we've been very successful at doing that. And I have to tell you, most patients have been extremely pleased with that approach. And of course, these days, McGee offers so much more than just care for women. Walk us through how some of the other areas of the hospital are functioning. So uh, beyond obstetrics and, and newborn health, McGee is really a full service hospital. So we have a very large and active medicine service. We have a, a general surgery service. We have lots of cancer services. Um, we have a vibrant orthopedic service. We have a cardiology center. We have a GI service, so we have we have a urologic service, so we have a lot of other services above and beyond the traditional, um, you know, perinatal health. Um, and each service is also get, trying to get back to a new semblance of normal. Spending a lot of time trying to get through some of the cases that were delayed, uh, and doing that in a clinically stratified manner that uh, really balances the need to get back. Uh, and have your procedure done in a more timely fashion, depending on kind of what the clinical condition is. So each service is doing that. We've asked every serv ser service lead to kind of prioritize their patients, and they're doing that extremely effectively. And over the next uh, handful of weeks, we should be back up to normal operating procedures in our operating room. But this is also the case for patients coming to the emergency department and patients that get admitted on the medicine service and other services. Everyone's adjusting to a new normal. 
And I know you're familiar with the UPMC Here's to the Heroes campaign. Talk about the heroes in your hospital and what your staff has been through and what they've been like through all of this. You know, before all this, we've always had a great culture and we've always had a great staff. Um, and what has been remarkable to me to watch is the way that people have rallied around this problem um, and taken it to a next level of excellence, of, of just compassion. And really, I am seeing our staff put patients first. As I said, we've always done that, but it has been remarkable to watch how well and how natural this has occurred for our staff to really put our patients first. Um, I think that everyone recognizes that um, it's an anxious time in the country. It's an anxious time in Allegheny County and Pittsburgh. And it's an anxious time for our healthcare workers, but in, importantly, it's a really anxious time for patients coming into the hospital. And while we have everything we need to ensure safety, and, and we've talked about all the things that we've done here at the hospital, I, we still know that patients are anxious. Um, and I have just been blown away by the, the compassion and the dedication and the uh, selflessness of our hospital staff to put patients first, which at the end of the day, that's why we're here. Um, so it's been really a nice thing to watch. And, and again, you know, our mission is to serve our community, and our hospital staff has taken that to heart um, in addition to what they've always done. They've just taken it to a next level. So I feel really great about people coming in here and getting care. And as we close, what message do you want to give to patients? The message is that um, we are here. We are prioritizing your safety and your care we're also prioritizing the safety and care of our healthcare workers so that they can be here for you. Um, it's a safe environment. Um, we are doing everything possible to continue to make it a safe environment. We've been here for 109 years serving the community and we feel very passionate about our need to do that. And we are here to continue that mission and, and put our patients first. So that would be my main message for everybody. Dr. Richard Beggy, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you very much for the opportunity. And thank you for joining us. I'm Tonya Caruso. This is UPMC Health Beat.